How's it going guys? It is uh, Friday, May 22nd when I'm filming this and it's been a little bit since I've had a vlog post. I said I was going to start doing that, not assuming that sort of the quarantine lockdown would go on necessarily this long, but we are still here. So here's another one. I thought today would be kind of fun to talk about uh, actually something that I've been getting into a little bit more. It's something that it's surprisingly I've been doing a little bit more of than uh, than my normal everyday gaming, which is RPGs. Role-playing games are something that I, I really thoroughly enjoy. I, I very much so. So role-playing games are not something that I, I grew up necessarily doing. I didn't play my first role-playing game until I was in high school. Uh, I came from a household where Dungeons and Dragons was a strict hard no. Uh, and so there was no real interest in jumping into that, even though I, I had friends that were very much into Dungeons and Dragons and uh, the Star Wars role-playing game, that was just never anything that interested me. And so we didn't talk about it, I guess. So high school rolls around and I, I come from a family of uh, fairly creative people that uh, enjoyed storytelling. Uh, and so once we started to realize what exactly role-playing games were, we thought, well, shoot, this seems like something that'd be pretty interesting. And we had recently gotten into Firefly and watched the Serenity movie in theaters. And we thought, well, this is a fun universe. And we realized that there was a uh, Serenity role-playing game. And so my older brother bought that game and that was sort of the first foray into RPGs and it was uh, just a total blast. Um, and everything from the accessories to the gameplay itself and the storytelling elements uh, immediately drew me in. Um, and I got into role-playing games before, long before I was like hardcore into the board gaming hobby at all. And that's when I, when we started doing that, that was, I immediately went out and bought my first set of dice, uh, a Chessex set of dice. Uh, here they are. And just the idea that you could put together some sort of compelling story where you were that integral into the storytelling aspect and it still be a game was really, really interesting to me. So we played that for a good little while. Um, I ended up moving out of state after college. Uh, we didn't play a whole lot while I was in college, but uh, moved away. And then my siblings got into some sort of uh, homebrew system. I played one or two of those. I can't even remember, can't even remember the, the system's name. But then I ended up uh, joining a group that was playing, that had just started playing Shadowrun. And this was a whole different ball game. While the theme was pretty cool, the idea of sort of a cyberpunk magic future, um, but the, the dice rolling system was completely different. I mean, it's a D6 system when you're rolling tons and tons of D6s. Uh, but again, it gave me that, that interest, that flair into something that I really, really enjoyed. And, and sort of jumping into some of the indie games, one that, uh, a couple that I've, I've found recently that I've played with people and really enjoy, um, one is Dread, which is a system that uses a Jenga tower instead of dice. Uh, it's very heavy on the storytelling element, but there's a real risk um, situation because if you your character knocks over the tower, it it ends the game or it ends it ends your character's life. And the other one was uh, Ten Candles, which is one of my my favorite in terms of just fully engrossing thematic games. It's a game that's played in the dark by the light of ten candles, and and your attributes in the game are on index cards and throughout the course of the game you're burning those and the lights are going out and the game ends literally when everybody dies, uh, which is when those 10 candles go out. It's very, very dramatic, very um, nerve wracking, atmospheric. It's something that I, I highly recommend that you check out. Uh, but also sort of in between that, I got into Call of Cthulhu, um, GM'd that for I think a little over a year and our, our uh, campaign actually kind of stalled out after a total party kill. Um, but really enjoyed that system as well. And by this time, I had started getting into board games more and more and, and realizing like, as much as I love RPGs, I can't always dedicate the time and resources and energy to an ongoing campaign, but I didn't give up on it. It was something that I still really enjoy and still currently really enjoy doing. In the midst of the Call of Cthulhu campaign, I started to dip my toes into Pathfinder and uh, played a couple Pathfinder adventure games, a uh, couple of Pathfinder uh, whatever whatever the version is where you go into a store and you kind of play with other people. I uh, played a couple of those and really, really loved it. Loved the setting. Um, I'd known about Dungeons and Dragons, knew that Pathfinder sounded essentially like the same thing, um, and intended to get into that, but it sort of fell away. But shortly after that, once the Shadowrun game that we were playing um, took a hiatus that it's currently still in, that same group and I picked up Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition. And they had played before, but I, I had never. This was my first experience in Dungeons and Dragons. And oh man, I loved it and I still love it. And uh, that's currently my main system. It's the system that I am both a player in and a GM in, or DM, I guess, depending on the system. 
Oh, and I love it. You know, over the course of time, I have all these different dice. So it's, it's, that's one of my favorite side aspects about this is the cool dice that you get. Um, so for any D5 based system, I uh, picked up a small set of Chessex dice, um, as well as these, uh, I want to say they're Hoyle, but I'm not sure. Uh, but sort of ivory with red pips, really cool. Uh, and now I actually own my first full set of metal dice, these metal table record dice. Um, and this set is from Foam Brain Games. Uh, and I, initially I was like, I, I will never need a metal set of dice. Um, turns out I love them. And they are hefty and they're just as much uh, fidget spinners as they are actual dice. But man, do they feel good in the hand. Uh, I certainly do have to use a dice tray so that I don't ruin my table with them. And most recently a game that I started playing, um, actually completed because it's a uh, very one-shot-esque, except you play over the course of multiple days, um, is The Wretched. And The Wretched opened my eyes to the fact that there is a lot of really good indie RPGs out there that I had no idea about. Because what The Wretched is, is a solo RPG. It's a game that you play by yourself. It's a storytelling game um, that uses one die, a deck of cards, and you write down uh, your thoughts and your opinions in a journal. Uh, and so I've actually recorded a video of myself um, just recording the audio version of my journal logs from playing The Wretched. And man, there's so many good games out there that I, I haven't even touched the surface of that I'd love to try. Um, Never Tell Me the Odds is a coin-based one that I'd really like to try. Um, and just, there's there's so many out there that, uh, oh, Blades in the Dark is another one that I've heard is fantastic that I would love to try. Uh, there's a crazy amount of, I mean, it's a whole world that I know just almost nothing about. Uh, but in my limited experience with RPGs, I know that I love it. I love that that type of play. And as someone that's naturally drawn to board games, I'm also naturally drawn to RPGs. And I think there's this big divide in board gaming um, where you've got the RPGers, the board gamers, and there's some intermingling here. Uh, but man, that should be a tighter gap because board gamers tend to love storytelling. And RPGs are all about storytelling. And not necessarily that every board gamer would be interested in something like this, but if you enjoy being sucked into the game and, and losing yourself in the game, then absolutely looking into RPGs, even some of the lighter ones, the one shots, finding someone that can run something like that for you is well worth looking into. Uh, and you don't even have to play it to see if it's something you would like. There are thousands of podcasts out there of people playing uh, Dungeons and Dragons or any system. Take a listen to the Encourageable Party. They're running through D&D and it is, uh, you can find out if you were interested in the system just by hearing other people play. And there's tons of opportunities to do that. Anyway, that's all I got for today. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, maybe we will run into each other at the gaming table someday. Um, and I'm open for RPGs or board games, whatever you are interested in. Thank you so much for watching and I will catch you next time.